But um, hello, everyone. I'm joined by Star Wars Discussion here, uh, and we're going to be talking about how he got into Star Wars, and we've been uh, talking a bit about the MonsterVerse and Star Wars and Star Trek already, uh, and we're going to continue doing that uh, today. Uh, so one of the first questions, I guess, that would come to mind is uh, how old were you when you got into Star Wars, and how did you get into it? Oh, wow. I want to say... Maybe six or eight. My dad had a VHS tape recorded of Return of the Jedi. And when I see nice. Luke Skywalker in the battle or in the Death Star fighting Vader and that green yeah. lightsaber, mm. this black outfit, you know, that blew my mind. Maybe it was the color contrast being that young, but seeing that saber being swung back and forth, I thought that was amazing. Oh, yeah. And then revisiting episode four or five. Back then it was just Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, the New Hope was amazing Get up to see Moss Eisley. That was mm. incredible. Yeah. And then personal, my personal favorite movie, you know, Empire Strikes Back. That was, Hoth was awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. And to find out they were all filmed in around the world that was mm. another cool little aspect of it yeah so you saw return of the jedi first then yes and then I, went back to a new hope and empire yeah actually it was part of a, a double recording that we had with a godzilla movie so that came wow. on right after it i'm like oh, let me see what's going on here watched it and loved it nice fell in love so you were there for Godzilla, and then because it was a double recording, it got you into Star Wars as a byproduct of that. Yes. I That's remember really cool. back in the day, you know, being a little kid, waking up early in the morning, popping the VHS tape and, mm -hmm. and speeding through the, all the humans talking and just watching the Godzilla fights, you know. Yeah. And uh, all that nonsense with, you know, monkeys and cockroaches <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah. And then... The, got to see the star wars return of the jedi that was pretty cool that's awesome so you pretty much immediately liked it then oh yeah i did i mean it it caught me and then like i said everything else that went with it just really got a hold of me and i was hooked that's awesome yeah i i was hooked right from uh so when I first watched Star Wars, it was with my dad, and uh, it was episode four, A New Hope. Uh, and when the Star Destroyer comes across the screen, oh, like yeah. you feel the magnitude of that. Yeah. And you're just kind of amazed by the scale of this. And it immediately like pulled you right in, like right off the bat. I don't know yeah. if that's how it was for me. Yeah, that, that was definitely an awesome experience that you brought up. I got to see when they remastered all that and it came yeah. to the movie theaters to get to hear that, that star destroyer coming in the background in the movie theater. That oh man. Awesome. Like with the theater speakers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And you know, cause you didn't have that at the house, you know, yeah. your little box TVs weren't <laughs> your little Sony box TVs with maybe the VHS DVD bundle included inside of it. <laughs> yeah doesn't have the same uh volume yeah correct yeah yeah so when did you first become aware that there was more to star wars than just the films that there was an expanded universe out there that you've uh now started to delve into uh on his channel he has book reviews on there on his instagram page he has some unboxing uh book haul type videos uh, where he shows off some of his collection and uh, he played uh, Star Wars, the old Republic as well. You were the head of a guild. So when did you become aware that there was a whole wider universe outside of just the films? Well, I want to say around when I was 14, maybe 15, might've even been 16 there. I joined a Star Wars fan club in Northeastern Pennsylvania. And okay. I was on the internet, this thing just starting up, you know, and 
So you had AOL waiting for all that stuff to try to load up and took forever. Hmm. So that was a struggle there. But we all met and at separate locations, every some people's houses. It might have been maybe at a park or somewhere. Hmm. And this guy had he just bought a gaming PC. I want to say like three or four thousand dollars back then. Wow. Which was, that's mind blowing for even back then. Yes. And that was just to play Star Wars Galaxy. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I remember vividly this older guy. He had to be in his 30s. He goes, You really paid that much just to play a game? <laughs> so we all tried it out and it was amazing. I think yeah. that was the the first little bit. And then that led into there was talks in the group about a Star Wars Insider, a magazine. Yeah. And my parents bought me a year subscription of that. Oh, wow. Very, very cool. Yes. And they had the New Jedi Order short stories in there. Yes. And I started coming across that. They had a, also had a uh, little ad for... Uh, what is it called? Book of the Monk Club, where you'd buy like five books for, I want to say like 99 cents or something like that. Wow. And uh, so I did that. And uh, one was uh, Enemy Lines. Yeah. Double book. And uh, Attack of the Clones and a couple other books. So I read Enemy Lines. Oh, man, that was amazing. That blew my mind. The yeah. New Jedi Order series, that book, you know, yeah. with Sidious's clone, Emperor Palpatine's clone son. Yeah. With all his appendages having lightsabers. That yep. was amazing. Yeah. So I would say really, besides Galaxies, the Star Wars Insiders was my opening into this mm -hmm. expanded universe. Because That's we had... Back in the day, we had, uh, you know, N64 with Shadow of the Empire. Yeah. But I don't think anybody really considered, you know, expanded universe yet. I think that was just more or less, it was a concept, you know. Yeah. If there wasn't back then, you know, part of the movies, if you didn't see it in the movies, then it wasn't what George wanted anything mm -hmm. to do with. It was just a merchandise yeah. grab. At least yeah. that's the way we took it back then because we didn't have expanded universe and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Or it wasn't that prevalent. Yeah. So Insider is a really cool place to um, have that be your entrance. I've, I've never heard anyone who like Insider was their first look into that. That's really cool because there was lots of those uh, Star Wars short stories in there. Oh, yeah. And I there was just about that whole year, maybe three of them weren't, did not have short stories in them. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool itself. Yeah. That, that's there. And then there was other stuff like articles in there that covered like background characters from the movies or like talked about the species, toy collecting stuff in there. Those insider magazines were amazing. Yeah. I mean, they had a bunch of stuff like, the prequels were coming out. I, like yeah. I said, I think uh, they were on maybe in between episode two to three. Mm -hmm. So Keanu Mundi was in there. At that time, he was one of my favorites. It wasn't a whole lot. You had some stuff coming out from Dark Horse for yeah. the comics. But other than that, it really wasn't a whole lot, especially a, a kid at that age with no money to go and buy mm -hmm. anything that there would have been. Yeah. So to get the Star Wars Insiders with a little bit of knowledge into this stuff was a pretty cool thing. Absolutely. That I think it's really amazing that uh, Insider was able to do that and bring Star Wars fans information every month or every so often. Um, I definitely would have enjoyed having that as a kid. Uh, that would have been really exciting. And it's a shame Insider goes for so uh, much money nowadays online. Oh. It's really expensive trying to track them down. Even in, uh, I think the only place that sells it nowadays, like the new issues around my area, at least, is uh, BAM. Books a Books million. million. Yeah. 
and there i think it's almost 12 bucks in a magazine yeah that's insane yes twelve dollars should be able to buy you a full novel not just a magazine nowadays exactly right but yeah i agree so you immediately loved enemy lines but had you read any of the rest of new jedi order or did you had you just jumped straight into uh enemy lines no, I at that point I jumped straight into enemy lines. Wow. Now back then I wasn't a really big reader. Yeah. Uh I didn't really have time to other things would happen, you know. And then I slowly made my way through enemy lines and I want to say it took me a while but a couple maybe a decade later I Ended up reading Victor Star or Star Vector by Prime. Star, yeah. and then uh, Vector Prime, and I just haven't jumped to the next ones in order to finish that series. Yeah, gotcha. it's daunting. It's it gets a little overwhelming. Yeah, especially it's a nineteen book series, so there, there's a lot of stuff there, and they're all pretty big books as well, uh, but. I'd, I'd say it's like my personally, it's my favorite Star Wars story of all of them because um, my mind was blown by just the sheer magnitude and scale of those stories. Did you Use like a bomb? Oh, yeah. Terrifying. Boys, terrifying. That should have been seven, eight, nine. Just saying. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It it would have been an amazing spectacle in theater to see oh, their yes. technology oh. brought to life, their costuming. Especially like, now in this day of the technology. Yeah. Oh, my this, God. The CGI that they could have used to be able to bring them to life could have been amazing. Um, it What I picture is like you could have had it a bit like Lord of the Rings because Yuzon Vong always reminded me of orcs. So oh, yes. Like these yes. Orcs now that you say that. Yeah. yeah. That mm-hmm. is an awesome point. I never really put the two together. But, yeah, they do – little bit of masochist in them too, huh? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I think the people that, that never read or heard of the use of Vong, once they see the lightsabers just ricochet off of them, yeah, I think they're going to be like, oh, crap. This is going to yeah. be something. Yeah. that You, you could have easily shown, like, in the first couple scenes, just how scary they are, you know, like, the, their armor is resistant to lightsabers. Their weapons are. The technology no one's ever seen. And then like having Luke realize that they exist outside of the force and he can't perceive their movements, like they're very intimidating. And they're they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The galaxy is in trouble. Those would be some pretty ominous films, I'd imagine. So I guess it wouldn't fit the family friendly tone of Disney, but pre Disney, if they tried to tackle some Use on Vong Star Wars films. I think they could have been amazing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, with their PG rating, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know how you could go about it. I'm sure they could have found a way to do it instead yeah. of doing what they did. Yeah, definitely. Did you enjoy Vector Prime and Star by Star as much as then on the uh, lines? Oh yes, yes. Maybe yeah. not as much because that being the uh, the first new Jedi yeah. Order book I read, and and to see a freaking guy have lightsabers come out of all your appendages, I mean that's kind of a little bit hard to stop. Yeah, but, but to see you know, I guess I can spoil because it's been X amount of years now. You know, to see Chewbacca die the way Chewbacca died, yeah, that was whoa. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I want to say, in one of those Star Wars Insiders issues, they talked about killing a hero. They wanted to kill Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And George just said no. Yeah. So that would have been interesting if they went that route instead of Chewbacca. I don't know how the heroes would have been able to pull off a victory against the Yuzon Vong if Luke had died in that opening book. I don't see how they could have found a way to get through the war without Luke there to uh, help guide them in the efforts. But yeah, they had asked, they had asked, Hey, can we kill Luke to George? And he had said, no. 
And according to one of the other authors, um, they then asked if they could kill Han, and Lucas said no. And then the editor for Dark Horse Comics was in on the meeting with the uh, Del Rey Star Wars authors, and he just said to them almost half-jokingly, uh, what if we kill the family dog? And he was <laughs> mentioning Chewbacca. And they asked George, and George finally relented and said, yeah, they could kill Chewie. <laughs> George's dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, George's dog. <laughs> so it's very interesting how uh, George Lucas was pretty involved with that. From what I hear, he was involved with pretty much a lot of the EU stuff. Yeah. His, uh, you know, they pitched him a bunch of ideas and he either yay or nayed them and mm -hmm. liked the authors, kept them around, booted them. Yep. Which I guess it, it's your baby. Yeah, yeah. And he had like certain parameters for what you could or couldn't do. Uh, he didn't want like them to explore Yoda's backstory too much. Stuff yeah, like I that. Yeah, I heard about that. That's, that is a cool aspect. Gives him that mystique, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like, Why is old Yoda? I always feel like I'd like to know what Yoda was doing, but at the same time not because... It would take away the like speculation aspect of what what was going on with him. Maybe we have our expectations up there, and we're just gonna get down here. Yeah. Especially yeah. now, where <laughs> everything seems to be down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you say your favorite book has been that you've read within the Star Wars expanded universe so far? Oh, with without a doubt, without a doubt, one hundred percent. Yeah. Darth Plagueis, the wise. So right? when did you read Darth Plagueis? Oh, I want to say maybe a year into when I started into the Old Republic video game series. So I want to say 2000, late 2004. Okay. Wow, that was, I wanted more. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a stunning book. And it, as someone who wasn't a huge fan of the prequels originally, it gave me such a higher appreciation for them because I feel like Darth Plagueis provides the backdrop that makes everything in the prequels make sense. It was all carefully planned. Did I ever tell you the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then that just opens the door. I, I want to know, you know, and then you get yeah. his master before him, Tenebris, that little bit of mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And it was just an amazing little thing. So it, it's such a shame that there's not more to Darth Plagueis. Uh, Lucino, yeah. the author, wanted to do a Darth Sidious novel, which would have carried uh, on from like Attack of the Clones through to A New Hope and would have told oh, his awesome. plannings then, which would have been amazing. Yeah. Sadly, we didn't see it come to fruition. Lucina, I mean, he would have pulled that off amazingly. Yeah. And I'm sure there's so many details that are in the movies and shows uh, that we didn't think about that are little mentions here or there that he would have turned into a big, important story. He's good with that tie-in stuff. He is amazing at it. Yeah. Every book he does, like, uh, I know you're not with the, the new canon stuff, but Catalyst that do goes into uh, uh, Rogue One. Yeah. I mean... Everything he touches with the tie-in stuff is just fire. It's it's yeah. good stuff. Absolutely. He's definitely one of the top-tier authors, I'd say, in the Expanded Universe. His knowledge of Star Wars as a whole is just quite amazing. And I want to say, I also read him, maybe it was online later, years later, that he was in charge of the New Jedi Order series. Like, he was the, the, the main guy that was set the slate everything out yeah he was involved in the uh planning process for it the early stages of it and he wrote uh two of the books within the new jedi order um that focus on han dealing with chewbacca after the death of chewbacca and his grief and he covers that really well i can only imagine he probably nailed that out of the part too yeah new new jedi order is very impressive, and I think we can definitely see Lucino's hands on that because of uh, how many connections there are within that to lots of stuff.
But what? So Star Wars Galaxies was your first game. Um, did you play anything between Galaxies and The Old Republic? Uh, the uh, console games, I would say. I worked at a full service gas station. I saved up enough money to buy a OG Xbox, right? The Very first nice. came out with the Duke and all that. Yeah. I believe it had a Duke with it. It's many years ago. And there was, it came with a double pack. Uh, it came with a Tetris game and a Clone Wars cartridge or Co Clone Wars disc. Yeah. And I also bought that day Jedi Academy and Kotor. Very nice. So I had a pretty good little game set right there. Yeah. All those games. Now, Clone Wars wasn't a great game to play. Yeah. Story with it with Ulick Keldroma coming to Anakin. Yeah. Vision or a so crazy. Ghost. That was yeah. pretty cool. Wild. The I, I definitely agree with you that the, the mechanics to it weren't the most polished. So it was kind of a difficult game to play because of the controls and the setup. But man, the story, like you said, it was really crazy to just have a Tales of the Jedi connection out of nowhere. Yes. That was that was awesome. Yeah. What what did you think of Kotor? Oh my god. Amazing. Yeah. Freaking amazing. I put 74 hours into my gameplay. Yeah. And then I did it at dark that was light side. I did mm -hmm. it dark side because it was a different ending. Yeah. And then I found out there was different dialogue if you played as a female. Yeah. So I did it light side and dark side as a female. So I was 74 73 hours a piece and I did yeah. every mission into it. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of OCD, so when it comes to video games, I want to see everything. So I'm like always going off into every corner, going to every person, making sure uh, I, I catch everything. I'll go back to the same person and play different dialogue to see what what else they have to say, you know. So it seems like you're much the same way with 74 hours into into a game like that. Unfortunately, I am. I, I don't, <laughs> yeah. Especially when I did that in MMOs with. Uh... Kotor, and then when I started playing WoW, that was yeah. very overwhelming. Burned yeah. out real quick. And Old Republic has a lot of content to it as well. Oh, uh, yeah. That's that's one game I've not gotten to play yet. Oh. But do you, do you, you enjoy it? Love it. You will love it. I quit because at that time I was a PvPer. Gotcha. And my guild. Shout out the Republic if they're still around. Hope they are. Uh, they were a PvP guild, so that's all we would do: PvP from night to night. Yeah. As soon as we got off work to bedtime, pretty much everybody was done. Yeah. And uh, the first guild I joined on the, my Jedi Guardian, the Brotherhood of Darkness. My the guy that was teaching me how to really be fundamental with the Jedi Guardian, Ulet Keldroma, which was his name, right? Yeah. Ulek. And he got the title of All Galaxy Jedi Guardian or All Je All Galaxy Guardian, I think it was called, mm -hmm. which was like the top five of all the servers, you know. Gotcha. You yeah. had to be elite of the elite. So learn from him made me an awesome player, actually. Yeah. You learned from the best. Yes. You had the Yoda of Old Republic PvP players as your teacher. Pretty much. I went against him with my sorcerer, and I pretty much got pushed my stuff pushed in and constantly. And I'm like, I want a character like that. So I started leveling up my guardian. I'm like, teach me. Took me <laughs> in and taught me and turned out to be a pretty good guardian. That's awesome. It sounds like uh, fun times getting to go home and hop on to that every every time you get back from work. Oh, I loved it. Like uh, when I was telling you I was the leader of the guild, I'd set up on Corbon. Yeah. Yes, Disney. It's called Corbon. <laughs> 
and look up into the sky, you see their their uh, star destroyer, you know, up yeah. there floating above the system. Mm-hmm. We a bunch of us would be on our thrones, that yeah, mounts, you know. Mm-hmm. And that was there'd be many hours just sat there and talking to each other. It was awesome. It was a fun yeah. experience. That's amazing. There, there's so many great touches that they put into Old Republic from what I've seen based on like watching playthroughs. Like they put a lot of detail into the planets. Oh, um, the graphics are amazing. Oh my yeah. God. EA did a fantastic job with that. The voice dialogues. Mm-hmm. First time ever MMO has every voice dialogue for every mission. Mm-hmm. Fantastic job. Yeah. Did you play it to any of the expansions? Yes. I went up to halfway through the Fallen Empire. Okay. Gotcha. That's when, the fourth one? Uh, what or was the it? third one? Hot Cartel. Shadow of, Reve- of Revan. Yeah, um, Shadow of Revan. Then was it Fallen Empire or Eternal Throne first? I can't remember. Oh, geez. Neither can I now. I think it's Fallen Empire first and then Eternal Throne, if I recall correctly. You, you very well might be right. I think what got me off of that and it started turning me against is they started having the imps and the pubs join forces in PvP. Yeah. So we're fighting Republic and Empire on the other team. Yeah. I'm like, that's just, that's dumb. To me, yeah. that was dumb. I'm playing as a Republic character. I want to fight the Empire character, you know? Yeah. Because it's always, you're always going to get challenged by the other side's faction. Me playing a Guardian, I'm always going to get challenged by a Warrior. Yeah. It's their version of the Guardian. Yeah. I would imagine it's the same for other classes, you know? Bounty Hunter's going to get rivaled up against a Trooper, et cetera. Yeah. And it makes sense, but... Old Republic, I think, has made some questionable decisions regarding its property over the years slowly. Like now they've start they've merged the guilds and purged like a lot of them. Oh, um, the servers. Oh, I, yeah. I've seen that online. Because after I did that video, I wanted to see the state of it at that yeah. time. And there used to be, holy crap, when I joined, there was a lot of servers like i joined yeah. the Abin hawk because just because i knew yeah. what the Abin hawk was mm-hmm. so i'm like all right that's i know what that is so let's go, go there and it turned yeah. out to be one of the last remaining servers mm-hmm. i think that got merged too yeah sad which is very yeah, sad very dis- sad i mean there was talks that way back that they were dying there's a server called Pot Five, Prophecy of Five, a strictly PvP server. Yeah. Build a character on there to get one in their main hub. There was five people on during midday. Mm. That's sad. That was very, very sad. When older games start to die, it it becomes uh disheartening. It's it's sad to see games slowly dying out because it's you think about how much time went into it once, how many people spent time on it once to think that that's, that's dying out is kind of a sad concept. But another game that you mentioned was uh, Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, uh, which is my favorite Star Wars game of all of them. Oh, nice. Um, did you enjoy that one? <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, I just think it's so cool that you get to play like with Luke's new Jedi Order. You get to see the temple on Yavin. And you get to interact with Luke and Kyle Katarn. And I just think it's a really fun game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Luke's one of one of my two favorite characters. Luke and uh, Sidious. Sidious, yeah. Two of my favorite characters. Now, I get to be Luke's Padawan. Oh, here's my yeah. card. I threw it right there. Take yeah. it. Give exactly. me it. I want it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a brilliant concept. Uh, that they did that with that game. I would have loved if they had continued done some sequels. Like, I like to think that maybe they could have even done one where you're fighting the Yuuzhan Vong, yeah. added into the books. It could have been amazing if they'd continued. But sadly, uh, it was the last one in the Dark Forces uh, series of games there. 
Yeah, that was that's another sad franchise. I wish it could bring it back, but maybe a remaster. Yeah, absolutely. The the games are so good and the stories are so good. So all you have to do is update the graphics and I think it would sell like crazy. Oh yeah. Even the PvP in that was pretty yeah. cool. And that that's another uh thing that was really active. But uh I I started doing uh some PvP stuff with Jedi Academy and there's less people now, which I guess makes sense. It's a 20 year old game, but still somewhat disappointing to see. But there are some mods of it uh, that people have made for Jedi Academy where you can fight on new maps. You can have new characters that they've added into the game. And that's, that's pretty active. There's a couple hundred players playing that usually, which is cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm always good to, glad to see uh, older games still have a little bit of population to them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one other thing you mentioned uh, from the Clone Wars video game with uh, the Ulit Keldroma Tales of the Jedi connection. Uh, d- did you get into the Tales of the Jedi comics? I started reading back when my kids were in elementary school. You know, we had to read uh, a book a day, right? Yeah. It was their assignment for my kids. So I read them a comic a day, right? Gotcha. Yeah. And it was Star Wars. And I think... We made it up to, now correct me if I'm wrong, but is the Naga Sadao, his story, was that part of the tales? Yeah, it was part of the prequel comics that they did. So that was uh, Golden Age of the Sith and the Fall of the Sith Empire. That is what we read up to, and then I think we jumped to Dark Empire. Gotcha. And then I think it went to Marvel or something like that. Cool. So you enjoyed those Tales of the Jedi comics? Oh, I loved them. Yeah. Big Naga Sadal fan. I mean, I think he's an underrated character for what yeah. he was. Mm-hmm. You know, that the first pretty much Star Destroyer he had. Yeah. Type-ish. Yeah. Where it can make it go supernova. Mm. That was cool. Come on. Yeah, Naga Sadal is a really cool character. And I think... I think a lot of it's to do with uh, his characterization. He comes across as like the stereotypical Sith. He's menacing. He's scheming. He's conniving. He's doing all these shadowy Sith things, planning, plotting, backstabbing his way to the top. And I think it makes him really interesting. Oh, without a doubt. I, I agree with you 100%. In his fight with Ludo Crash, you know. Oh, power. So good. Yeah. Yeah. That's... That's. I feel like that's when you watch the movies and you're told about the ancient Sith. That's the kind of thing you think of, like powerful people battling against each other. So it's cool to see those stories actually depicted. With their actual iron swords. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's. It was crazy to see some of the older technology. And in Tales of the Jedi, you've also got the like corded lightsabers. The backpack one. To their belt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Ghostbuster ones. Yeah, the Ghostbuster lightsabers, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, did What did you think of Dark Empire with Palpatine returning there? Oh, like I said, right? Luke fan, Sidious, Sidious fan. fan. Yep. He's his apprentice now? Yeah. Here's my money, take it. Yeah. Give me the stuff, I want it. Absolutely. And Even though it was a double cross, but still, I'll take yeah. it. Yeah, your two favorite characters now. On the same side with lots of panels uh, dedicated to them in the that comic book. I mean, that was it was fantastic. I I liked it. I hear a lot of people online that don't like it. Yeah, and I don't quite get why. Yeah, I agree. You get to see now. I, I played the the old Republic, right? Mm-hmm. Sorcerer. You did, they did Force Lightning, right? Yeah, that was a small scale. What Palpatine did to that world. And yeah, gulped it in a big force lightning. Yeah, his, so that just you know shows you the and that was a clone. Yeah, that did it. What could the original one have been capable of in his prime, if a clone of him was able to able to do that? Yeah. What and, did what what uh, Lucina say? Sithari. He was yeah. the Sithari. Mm-hmm. Yep. And. I mean, he, he's a really cool character, and Lucino gives the background for him. 
And the crazy thing is you find yourself almost rooting for him when you read Darth Plagueis. At least I did. And then I'm having to remind myself, no, this is the bad guy of everything. <laughs> he's just written as such an interesting character that you're hoping their plans click together the way it's written. Yeah. He did an awesome job. Yeah. With, with Dark Empire, I see a lot of criticism also directed at the art. But I really enjoyed the art to that series. I get that it's a little bit out there with like all the blues and greens, like color scheme. What did you think of the art? That came out what? The 90s, right? Yeah. 94, it's 95. 90s. It's 90s art. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's – now, I don't want to say it's an age thing, but if you don't know, then you don't know back then. Yeah. Yeah. You know? The artwork back then is way different than it is now, you know? Yeah. Hand-drawn back then. Now mm – -hmm. It's all digital drawn. It's digital, yep. It's for its time period. It was good. It yeah. It was a good story. Mm hmm. Very good story. I uh, I think it's funny also that there's a lot of criticism in online articles directed at Dark Empire, and people would be like, uh, "Why it's a good thing the EU was decanonized and discontinued? Palpatine returning in Dark Empire." And the funny thing is, I saw all these articles back then. But after Rise of Skywalker came out, where they did the same thing that Dark Empire did, they stopped doing those articles uh, because now they've done the same story. Now, th this is where me and you differ, right? You're a strictly mm -hmm. EU guy. Yeah. I'm an EUI and canon. Yep. But 789 is a bunch of crap. <laughs> those movies are crap. They took everything from the EU. Yeah. Ray is Jaina Solo. Yep. Jaina. Kylo Jason. is Caden. Yep. Exactly the same premise. Yeah. They are the same people. Mm hmm. And then you bring back Palpatine again, like we talked about Dark Empire. Yeah. A clone. Let's shoot lightning up into the sky. Bring yeah, they the even did that. Destroyers. Yeah. And. It's a shame because I think that the EU has material that could have made good movies in the right hands. So to see it kind of taken and used to make not as good stories is kind of unfortunate. Disney is hemorrhaging money. Mm. They could have been prosperous. They were oh, yeah. handed the golden goose of Star Wars. Do 789 Thrawn. 12, use a bomb. Yep. Wow. Nobody would have complained one iota. Nope. That would have been amazing. Made everybody happy. You have yeah. the material there. Missed opportunity. Very missed opportunity. Very, very, very missed opportunity. So we've talked about a lot of things that you like about the expanded universe. Have you discovered anything about it that you're not as big a fan of so far? I hear a lot of people say it's maybe it's the same doubters that say it's overwhelming mm. to jump into EU. Yeah. Which I could sort of see their point, but I sort of don't see their point. Pick an era, go from there. Yeah. Read back, go forward. Mm. It's up to you. You're your own person. You got to pick which way you want to go. Yeah. But is it down part? Other than maybe a couple books might have been bad here and there. You're going to have that no matter yeah. what franchise or whatever. Absolutely. I don't see a bad part with it. Yeah. They gave us, like I said, seven through. 12. Yeah. They gave us the perfect sequels that were faithful to the original trilogy and even built upon it uh, and elevated the material. Yeah, and, and that stuff of them uh, wanting to start their own footprint, their own carbon footprint on it. Yep. Great start, Disney. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So not really any complaints about it so far uh i i do see the point that it's overwhelming it took me a long time to get through all of it and 
still there's like different short stories from the insiders that I haven't read yet. There, there, it's a it's a huge universe, so it, it is a little daunting, which I think is its only drawback. But I guess that's that's, that's like 40 the con. Years, right? Are we yeah. at forty years yet? Thirty years, there, something like that. Thirty-eight years. Thirty-eight years. Universe. Yeah. Of course, it's gonna be huge. Yep. And. It, that's both why it's so good and why it's hard to get into it. I think at the same time, it has to be like a, a two sides of a two sides of a coin there. And that, I guess that's where you just you can't think of it like that. You got to think of all right, maybe who's your favorite character? What time period do you want to jump in? Do you yeah. want to go prequels four, five, and six? Mm-hmm. After sex, there's a bunch of good stuff after sex, you know? Yeah. Just jump in, enjoy the ride. Because yep. I, I come to terms. Me personally, I'm almost 40. I'm never going to be able to read all of it. No way in hell. There's just too much. I'm just going to enjoy what I can and just love it. Yeah. Absolutely. For a long time, I'll tell you what. When 789 came out, I left the old Republic, you know, I was very disappointed with seven. Yeah. Eight, nine killed my love for star Wars. Yeah. Like I wouldn't touch star Wars at all. Anything. Yeah. Like it killed it. It, fuck, it really killed it. Mm -hmm. And then one day flipping through YouTube, you, uh, Chris and a bunch of other YouTubers, you know, watching them talk about EU. It made me, let me, let me give this another whirl. I love yeah. this thing. Let's go back to the EU, read a couple of the books. Let's see how Star Wars is supposed to be done right. Mm. So I did. And then I said, let me not watch the movies but let me read a couple of the canon books see how that is yeah some of them were good yeah i give it some were good some nice some were bad maybe i'll give it another shot no yeah. that's that's awesome that you were able to get back into it i really related to what you said about like eight and nine kind of killed your love for uh for <clears throat> excuse me for a time I felt I felt much the same way. I just kind of disheartened um, to see something I loved get transformed into something that I didn't like. So I think the EU is important because there's all these good stories here. And from the sounds of it, uh, some of the some of the Disney canon books uh, have some good stuff in it. So I think it's important to be able to find good Star Wars content uh, nowadays because yeah. there is so much of it. It's just about uh, finding it. Just enjoy the good stories for what they are. Yeah. For sure. And especially um, if it has James Lucino on it, you know. It, it, yeah. It Absolutely. Lucino's top tier author. Um, a shame that we didn't get uh, more from him when we could have. A Darth Sidious novel would have been so good. He, he gave me enough. I, I can't complain. Yeah. Would I like more? Yeah, I'm a glutton. But <laughs> yeah. We can't be too greedy. Yeah. But, uh, when it, when it comes to his masterpieces, uh, we're not ready for more, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, but we still got other good artists, like Matt Stover. Oh, so good. Drew uh, Carpachine. Yep. Yeah, I always think I'm going to pronounce his name weird. It's a weird spelled name. Yes. Uh, you got a bunch. And even, even new canon stuff. You know, Claudia Gray, she's pumping out good stuff mm. here and there. You know, I think if they let them put their own little notch into things and just mm. have at it, do it. Yeah. You might have something to revive Star Wars because Disney's not going to let EU live. I, mm. I don't see it as much as I love it. Yeah. They're just going to take and pillage and do what they want with the EU. Yeah. Hope, I guess hope for the best. Yeah. I'm, I'm optimistic. I think in the right hands, maybe the expanded universe could be revived, but
But for the large part, they've kind of ignored it, like you said, plundered it for ideas. So it's been kind of disheartening. Um, but to the Empire. Yeah, uh-huh. to the Empire in the Ahsoka trailer. That was absolutely frustrating. Uh, Tales of the Jedi being a show about Ahsoka instead of Ulit Keldroma and Exar Kun. Um, stuff like that. But overall, I do have hope that maybe someday it could be continued. But uh, that that optimism is only optimism. It, it's not looking, not not always looking good. But if if the fans can make our voices heard, um, who knows? You know. Well, maybe they will. If they keep losing money like this, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. They've lost like I think they lost a billion dollars on movies this year alone. Absolutely crazy amount of money. Just uh, gone. It's that woke stuff. It's killing them. Yep. Yep. They the force is not women. The force is everybody. Yep. Oh man, what? That was maybe the first red flag uh, that Star Wars wasn't in exactly the right hands when uh, Kathleen Kennedy wore that that shirt. Did you see that little clip on YouTube where Spielberg sit talk and then he's like kathleen go get us some coffee yeah i have seen that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah see steven asking for coffee uh created a monster because 20 years later she made it her goal to destroy star wars and indiana jones and she, she's doing a bang up job at it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, I appreciate you coming on here to talk about me a little. Uh, to talk about me, <laughs> to, talk, to talk about how you got into the expanded universe. Uh, it's been a great discussion. And uh, do you have anything coming up on your channel? It, it will be linked below. Can't talk right now. It will be linked <laughs> below. And uh, he's got some good stuff on there so far. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking it out. Well, I plan on having a Revan book review. Coming Very out. nice. Awesome, Revan. Yeah. And then uh, I'll give you a little hint. Maybe a little three-parter one. Very nice. Very nice. The Bane books are incredible. Oh, yes. Without a doubt. Now, Those that's some... definitely when that ended. That was definitely something I was like, no, I need more. Yeah. Scouring the internet, looking. I yeah. need What? You can't leave me like this. Yep, and Drew Karpishin has said multiple times, like with the hint, hint Disney, he said multiple times, I would love to write a Darth Zana novel. Oh, my God. I would buy that immediately. Yep. That would sell oh. so well. Like, when that ended, I was like, so what happened with Darth Zana? Yeah. What? Is exactly. Bane inside of her? Is what, Bane, what's yep. going on? Is he still there? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's... An amazing ending, the way he leaves it kind of open. Do dark siders amazingly? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't think anybody can touch him when it comes to dark side characters. Yeah, yeah. He, he. Oh man, he. Yeah, he's an incredible author. He's able to capture characters really, really well. Specifically, those dark side characters and the battle with Bane and Zana with all the Jedi. Such a good oh, scene. Man. Bane versus Zana in the last book is really well written. Just visual stuff, you can see it, you know. That was that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and telling uh that other uh for, forget her name now. The the lady who's gonna be their apprentice. Uh she's like, I'll just sit back and wait for the wind. Yeah. You two duke it out. Cognus, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dark yeah. cognus. Yeah. And I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Yeah. And it, I mean, it makes sense. Sit there about self preservation. We're going to take our time, get to power. You know, Darth Cognus would have eventually figured out a way to kill Zana and take an apprentice of her own, all the yes. way down to Tenebris and Plagueis. If, if Drew Carpishan had written the Sith lineage, just a trilogy for each section all the way down, I don't think we'd get tired of it. We'd keep oh, reading. I, I know I wouldn't. Yeah. I would read every, I would buy every one on release date, read it. Yep. I'd even audiobook them too. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He's a terrific author, and it's really a shame that we haven't gotten that Zana novel that he's he's clamoring about writing. Maybe someday we could see it, though. I, I hope. I hope. Because that would be amazing. Yeah. So you've got some Bane reviews coming. You've got a Revan review coming. Um, everyone should go on over there uh, and check out his channel, check out his reviews. Um, and uh, yeah, the, uh, one more thing I wanted to say is those hardcovers of Bane looked really, really nice. Oh. I, I always like the hardcovers, but they're a bit more expensive than the paperbacks. So I, I figured, you know, and, and I made sure I got the first prints when I got them, right? Nice. Yeah. I, I knew they were going to be quite a bit. And the Plagueis. Well, I got the Plagueis mm. before it really blew up. Yeah. But the Banes I got, I paid a nice little premium for them, but they're just something I feel that if you're a Star Wars fan, even if you don't read the books, you know, that's something you should have in your collection. Yeah. I 100% agree. It is a staple. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Plagueis and those Bane books. Yes, probably arguably the best four books in all of Star Wars, period. I could I could see an argument being made for that. I personally prefer New Jedi Order, but all of those are like right up there at the top for me. What, what, what's your favorite outside of Plagueis? Would it be those Bane books next? I, I would say I don't know because I, you know, this this Revan book, you know, yeah. I mean, and like I said, I'm a big Kotor and Old Republic. It ties everything right in. Yep. But like I said, I wanted more when I got done with the trilogy. Yeah. I think if you know it's a good book, you want more when you're done, and you're lusting for more. I feel like. He turned me into a Sith by the time I was done. I was less <laughs> more, right? Yeah. yeah. It's definitely got to be the Bane trilogy. Yeah, 100%. I wanted yeah. more, and damn it, I couldn't get it. Sadly, not yet. Sadly, not yet. Maybe I just give us a comic series. I'm cool with that, too. A comic series would be great. Yeah. Um, I, I really related to what you said about you felt like a Sith. Uh, for reading the Bane books, you really do. You feel like you could shut the book and shoot some force lightning out your fingertips because it really pulls you in. Yeah. Hey, maybe I'm the Sith Ari. I don't know. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe Drew Carpishan's a Sith Lord all along. <laughs> <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He he's the apprentice of Lucino, and they're they're the <laughs> they're the secret Sith in our society. It's because all the other writers got dogmatic, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So thank you for joining me for this. Uh, and I'll, maybe we can uh, do another discussion like this at some point. Uh, have an update on where you're at with uh, with your readings. And uh, yeah. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me on. Absolutely, man. We'll have to do it again sometime. All right. Uh, everyone watching, thank you for watching. And make sure to go check out Star Wars Discussion. He's in the uh, description below. So we'll see you all next time. May the Force be with you.